Hello guys and gals and welcome. So I have finished every single set. I've gone over all the items. Uh, I have upgraded them all. I've looked at them in their original form. I've looked at them in their upgraded form, which is the uh, the new 2.4 changes. I've looked at them in their upgraded form, as in upgraded with the cube recipe from uh, Tier 1 to Tier 2, uh, and also from Tier 2 to Tier 3. And uh, just to be absolutely clear, that is normal difficulty items to exceptional, exceptional difficulty items to elite. Or if you uh, understand it in a different way, normal difficulty items to nightmare, nightmare, di nightmare difficulty items to elite. And I have literally upgraded every single set in the game from the lowliest of low infernal set all the way up to the highest of high uh, Talrash's set. And um, what we're going to do today is I have actually prepared a ranking list of um, what I think are the best upgrades uh, and we're going to start from number 10. So stick around to the end because you're going to find out what I think is the best upgrade out of all the sets so far. Uh, so we're going to start off with number 10. Uh, now this is an upgrade that I feel like is a halfway decent upgrade, uh, but it is not something that I would rank very high. Um, and you know what? Let's start out with the honorable mention first, shall we? So the honorable mention uh, was actually Hasura's. I did not feel like Hasura's was so bad of an upgrade that it warranted... Um, not being on the list, uh, even though I did rank it at number 11. Uh, this is the top 10, I understand, but this is uh, this is number 11 on this list. It just barely squeaked out underneath of everything else, and uh, and the reason why is because Hasuras has a very nice, or Hasaras has a very nice effect of plus 990 attack rating based on character level on the boots. Um, if you upgrade the belt, you will get maximum potion slots. And if you upgrade the boots, you will get higher kick damage. Um, you can also upgrade the shield for increased block chance. And the three-piece bonus on this set is actually very nice, especially since it has cannot be frozen on it. Um, and, uh, and I did feel like that the potion slot increase from the belt was relatively cheap at a shale and a towel and uh, could very easily be done for one tier. Um, the kick damage increase from the, uh, the chain boots to the nightmare tier was definitely very welcome and uh, and the defense and block chance increase on the uh, shield was actually quite welcome um, and the one tier upgrade on Hasaras was actually very good um, I did feel like overall you got quite a lot out of it you got a good amount of defense you got more potion slots you got more kick damage uh, but I didn't feel like it was worthy of the top 10 um, and I'm going to tell you why uh, because it doesn't really have a lot going for it other than um, the attack rating and the cannot be frozen. Uh, there's really not a lot more on this set other than those two stats. And the other big downside of this uh, set is that obviously to get the cannot be frozen, you have to use the shield. So you are left with the attack rating for just the belt and the boot combo. Now the belt and boot combo does work fairly nicely. Um, on just about any character to get you a pretty huge attack rating bump as well as a very nice uh, faster run walk fire resistance you also get the cold resistance on the belt and one of the big downsides of this set has always been that uh, you know the, the belt had terrible potion slots and the other option was the shield which took up your main resistance giver um, and that's really the big issue with this set is that the shield is taking up the slot that you would put say an Ancient's Pledge, a Rhyme Shield, uh, which also gives Cannot Be Frozen, by the way. Um, also, you could put a, uh, you know, a Spirit here, um, and so many other different things that can go in this slot that I just really don't feel it's worth consuming that piece. So let's move on to number 10 on the list. So number 10 on my list uh, was Talrosh's uh, wrappings. Talrosh's wrappings is actually um, a very interesting set because if you choose to wear Talrosh's wrappings, you are making a conscious decision not to wear anything else. And it is actually a very good set. Um, and it can be used end game also. Um, a lot of people do actually just put Talrosh's on their end game character. And, um, and for this reason, um, you can upgrade various pieces. You can upgrade the, the uh, orb, which is, of course, not a good idea, because obviously you're not going to be bonking things. So that is a no. However, you can upgrade the mithril coil, or sorry, the, uh, the belt, the fine-spun cloth, and you can also upgrade the Herodric crest. 
Um, this is actually a really good combination because, quite honestly, the character who is going to be using this is most likely going to be using the entire set. Um, unless you're just doing the two-piece bonus for the magic find, which is very nice. But even if you're doing the two-piece bonus uh, for the magic find, or the is it three-piece bonus? I think it's, yeah, it's three-piece bonus. Even if you're doing the three-piece bonus for the magic find, the belt is still a solid upgrade, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, so basically, when it comes to the armor values, you're getting a bonus. It's not a very big bonus, but you are getting a bonus. And if you are deciding to use this set as your main set, if you have made a conscious decision, like, I am going to use Talrasha's set on my Sorceress, and I'm not going to use anything else, then upgrading the helmet becomes a no-brainer because it's only 102 strength. And if you look at the armor, the armor is 84. Uh, and the belt only upgrades to 85 strength. And both of these are way below the amount of strength needed for a spirit monarch shield, which is usually the shield of choice for a sorceress. So getting that little extra defense bump on both of these items, the belt and the helmet, is actually not a bad idea. The, the, uh, the, uh, this is, however, not. Now, they do have quite an expensive cost to upgrade at a lem and a co. So it's obviously not something that you're going to be doing right away. But keep in mind that if you're still using this set, you know, like two months into the ladder, um, and you happen to be swimming in Lems and Co's, which does happen, by the way, because it eventually gets to the point where you've got so many Lems and Co's, you don't know what you're doing with them. And if you're still running this on your Sorceress two months into the ladder, then why not? Why not get the extra defense bump so that you can multiply that with a skill like shiver armor. Um, I can multiply that defense out, and I can make it even higher. Um, and every single point of defense that I've got, from my shield, from my gloves, from my belt, from my boots, uh, is all going to add up to more defense on this, which is survivability, right? And who wants to die? So, number 10... Talrasha's helmet and Talrasha's belt. Although I do really see the belt being one of the main upgrades here uh, because the belt upgrades from the, um, what is it, the mithril? i trying to remember here. It upgrades from the mesh belt to the mithril belt. Um, so it goes from basically about 95 to 100 defense um, and it upgrades up to like, I think it's like 120 to like 130 defense, uh, a little bit of a variable there. So you do gain about 20 to 30 defense for a lemon co, which is not exactly a great thing. But like I said, if you're using this anyway, and this is where this is a lot of my thinking goes into this. Okay. If you're using it anyway, if you're going to be wearing it on your character anyway, if you're going to be using the, you know, the three piece bonus here, then why not? Well, if you if you eventually you've got the point where literally you've got so many lemon codes you don't know what to do with them, why not just give it a bump up? The strength requirement doesn't go up so high that it's terrible, and the um, and the level requirement doesn't go up so high that it's terrible. Um, enough about Talrashes. Let's move on to number nine on the list, and that is Griswold's heart. So Griswold's heart is a ornate plate. Um, it does have negative 40% requirements on it by default, and if you upgrade it to its higher form, which is the Sacred Armor, um, you can use a Sacred Armor on just about anybody, because with the negative 40% requirements, it goes down to only 140 strength required. Um, a lot of people actually use Griswold's Heart for the three sockets. It's basically a three-socket armor that has some other buffs on it um, that is, of course, at least better than, you know, something like a, a white you know, ornate plate or something like that. Um, granted, you could go with a uh, four-socket white ornate plate or, or something like that, but um, Griswold's Heart does tend to be used by people specifically for the purpose of the sockets. And uh, because the negative 40% requirements is on there, it actually does posture it in a position where if you were utilizing it for those sockets, why not upgrade it? Um, especially if you were using the entire set. The Strength requirement on the Vortex Shield is 148. The strength requirement on the Corona is 105. The strength requirement on the weapon is 78. But to use the entire set, you've got to have at least 148 strength for the shield. Now, this is a little bit of a downside because the armor does offer 20 strength. So if you were to have just the bare minimum strength requirement for the Vortex Shield, um, you could potentially have 128 strength 
and still be able to wear the Vortex Shield because the Griswold Heart is giving you 40. Um, and this is an interesting situation. If I go ahead and respec here, I can show you guys what I mean. So if I bring my strength up uh, just enough so I can start to equip some of this gear, um, I will have to get up to 140 before I can use the Vortex Shield. Um, and that is the point at which the armor allows me to equip the, uh, the shield. But if I take off the shield, everything will be unequipped. Um, and this is specifically because the armor is giving me the strength to wear the shield. Now, you do still have a little bit of a min-max here. You don't have to go to 148. You only have to go to 140. Um, so it still does require you to, um, to min-max a little bit. But the issue here is that you are putting in, if you upgrade this for Chris Wall's set, you are putting in a little bit more strength than you otherwise normally would. Um, and, uh, and that's certainly a downside. And if we calculate exactly how much that is on a calculator, um, we can subtract, for instance, the 128, which is what we acquired, 128, and we subtract that from 140. Um, and what we will come out with is um, a difference of... Bink, bink, bink. Uh, 12. So effectively, we are losing 12 strength, which could potentially go into vitality. So let's let's say it like that. We're potentially losing 12 vitality for the increase in defense on the armor. And the increase in defense isn't like a super big, massive bonus. Um, but again, similar to the Tal Rashes, if we are specifically using this piece of armor... Like, for instance, if we are wearing the entire set, or if we have socketed up with uh, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, gems. Like, maybe we're trying to do some sort of, um, uh, li you know, lightning facet or something set up. Uh, whatever it may be, whatever we're utilizing Griswold's Heart for, in that case, can we upgrade it to the higher version to get the defense bump? And if we upgrade it to the higher version to get the defense bump, is it worth it? Um, because the original defense on the plate is between 917 and 950. Um, the upgraded version is 1,000, I think it's like 1,000 to like 1,100. Um, it's, it's a kind of a variable, of course, because the sacred armor does have a variable on it. So you, you, you know, Griswold hearts are not hard to come by. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. Um, and you could upgrade several of these until you get one that has perfect stats. So the perfect version of the Sacred Armor is actually 600 defense. Um, and we also get a 500 defense bump from the armor itself. So we're looking at 600 plus 500. So a perfect version would be 1100 defense, uh, which is not amazing, but it's still about... I want to say 100 to 200 defense higher than Griswold's Heart. And uh, before you uh, mock it, uh, let me show you that when you actually utilize your Holy Shield, um, which, uh, do I even have any skill points? <laughs> let me go ahead and put some points into Holy Shield here. Uh, when you actually utilize Holy Shield with the new armor, you actually do gain quite a bit of extra defense um, from the piece. Uh, if we take off the armor, for instance, and you look... Of course, I don't have enough strength to actually wear anything here. There we go. So we have 3,142 without the armor, and it multiplies that 1,039 quite nicely up to 8,181. Um, the defense bonus, bonus, I said bonus, that we get from Holy Shield is massive, and that 200 defense on Griswold's armor could be a pretty huge bonus. Now, defense is not the main stat that you need to worry about, but if you were using Griswold set anyway, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't upgrade this. Now, moving on to the eighth item on the list, um, we are going to be going to Trangools. So Trangools is a very interesting set that um, you either wear the entire set or you wear three pieces of the set. But you generally don't wear just like one or two pieces of the set unless you are a sorceress who's trying to get that faster cast. Um, a lot of the times what people will do is they will utilize the three-piece bonus, which is the Trangul's wing 
the Trangles belt and the Trangles claws. Um, also, people will utilize the full set because they like to be the vampire and uh, run around and pretend to be a vampire and scare little noobs and stuff. And, and, and I've actually done it myself. It's, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> They try and attack you, and, uh, and it's cool. So if you are utilizing this whole set, if you are utilizing the entire thing, um, and you have no intention of taking it off, then the Vambraces, the, uh, the Triangle's Claws, which upgrade the Vambraces, is a good upgrade. Uh, the Triangle's Wing, which upgrades to the Succubus Skull, is a good upgrade. And the Triangle's Scales, which has a very nice negative 40% requirement on it, upgrades very nicely to the Shadow Plate. Now, I would not recommend any of these upgrades um, if you were not utilizing this set. Like, for instance, if you just were putting it on in passing, like maybe you were using triangles uh, in passing as you leveled up, then don't upgrade it. Um, if you're just utilizing the wing, you know, in passing as you level up, don't upgrade it. Um, if you have no intention of actually utilizing the claws for the faster cast, and, and you want to, you know, go to Mage Fists, eventually you just haven't found them yet for some reason, because sometimes they do elude me. Um, you know, don't upgrade it because you don't really want to spend a lem and a co on this kind of stuff unless you're going to be using it for a long period of time. And that's really what it comes down to here. What it comes down to is, is if you are a character, like for instance, a Poison Nova Necromancer who is using the wing, the belt, and the gloves which is a very common because the gloves have 25% poison skill damage and the wing has the negative 25% enemy poison resistance. If you're going to be utilizing those pieces anyway, there's no reason why you shouldn't upgrade them. Um, because if these are your best in slot pieces, you might as well get a little bit of extra defense out of them. Now granted, it's not a lot of defense, but it can definitely be helpful um, if this is going to be your main set and you're not going to use anything else. And from the same point of view, if you are going to be the vampire, there's no reason not to upgrade the armor. Uh, the armor only goes to 138 strength requirement, and the defense bump is pretty nice uh, because it does have a scaling percentage of 150% enhanced. And um, the defense bump that you get from all three items, from upgrading the wing, from upgrading the armor, and upgrading the gloves, is definitely very useful. Um, and then we can look at this also from the perspective of a sorceress. If this is your main set of faster cast gloves, if you're a hammered in, if you're any kind of character who's using these particular gloves as your faster class gloves, so you're not using Mage Fists, you've chosen Triangle's Claws, and these are your best in slot pieces, the defense bump is actually kind of sad. It's only about like 20 or 30 extra defense. But the strength requirement only goes up to 106, and the level requirement only goes up to level 58. It's not bad at all, and Trang's gloves are not exactly so rare that, uh, that it would be a terrible upgrade. So, you know, later on when you've become established and you've got plenty of Lemon Co's laying around, it could be a decent upgrade to get you a little bit of extra defense on your Sorceress, your Paladin, uh, maybe even your Hurricane Druid, whatever it may be that you're using these on. It's a decent upgrade, um, and that's why I put it at number eight. So we're going to move on to number seven, and number seven is an interesting upgrade because it involves a shield that has massive block chance. So let's go take a look at that. So this set is Orphan's Call, and Orphan's Call is a very interesting set that, um, quite honestly, was... Um, I'm kind of hopeful for, but the uh, the belt does not upgrade well. The gloves upgrade okay, but they're not very good gloves. The helmet upgrades terribly. It goes up to 192 strength requirement. But the shield actually goes up very, very nicely. Um, it's very impossible, actually, for me to show you this, uh, because the shield has way above 75% block chance. And you might be asking yourself, well, what does that actually mean? Well, when you find Wiston's Guard Round Shield... It has a block chance of 97% for Paladins. It has a block chance of 92% for uh, Amazon, Assassin, and Barbarian. And it's even lower for Sorceress. Um, I believe it's around like 89% uh, or something along those lines. And um, when you upgrade Wiston's Guard from the Round Shield, which only has a native block chance of 42%, uh, for um, an, a, a paladin, and only 32% for a sorceress. 
um, it actually gets way better. So we have a increased chance of blocking by 55% on this shield, which is massive, right? Um, and you have to add that to the bonus that you're getting, um, you know, your, your normal block chance. And uh, for every single character in the game, the shield is 75% block chance. And the boon of this is that you can reach your block cap easier with less dexterity. Um, so on a barbarian, if I'm using this shield, uh, let me show you. So let me go ahead and put my uh, strength points in so I can actually wield the shield. And uh, so here we have the shield on, and I'm at 20 dexterity. And you notice I am only at 2% block chance. So every time I put more points into dexterity, my block chance will go up. And, uh, and if I put enough points into dexterity, my block chance will hit the cap. Well, because the block chance on this shield is so ridiculously high, it modifies the calculation and makes it so that I will hit my block cap sooner than I normally would. So for 164 points of dexterity, I can hit the block camp cap on a barbarian, uh, which is relatively low because I actually double-checked this with a uh, Storm Shield Monarch, for instance. It's like 213 dexterity to hit the same 75% block chance. And um, this means that Wiston's Guard has become one of the absolute best block chance shields for low dex involvement. Um, so if you actually want to build high block chance on any character in the game that is not a paladin, um, this shield is going to make it extremely easy to reach the 75% cap. Um, and let's go over what those numbers are real quick. Um, I don't want to take too horribly long here, but I would like to, uh, to bump these up. So, for a sorceress, um, the original version of this shield um, only had a block chance of, uh, what was it, um, 32% plus the 55 on the shield. So we are looking at 32 plus 55%, uh, which is a total of 87% block chance on the original version of the shield, the round shield, Wiston's Guard. Um, the new version of the shield, because it is rocking the very nice 40% block chance instead of the original block chance, uh, we go up from 87 to 40 plus 55 is 95% block chance for Sorceress. Um, for a uh, <laughs> assassin, a barbarian, or an Amazon, um, it is 45% plus 55. And 45% uh, plus 55% is 105% block chance, which is nuts. Um, we also have the Paladins, which the Paladin has an innate block chance with the Luna of 50%. So 50% plus 55% um, is a total of 105% block chance. Uh, this means that on a Paladin, if you were to utilize this early game uh, at level 52, which is when you can equip it, um, you could potentially reach your 75% block chance with absolutely minimal dexterity um, increase. And you also have to account for Holy Shield as well, which means that this shield might actually be the lowest dex block chance paladin shield that has ever existed. Um, I don't know exactly how much block chance it would take to reach the, uh, the cap with this, but, you know, we can always go check that out. Let's test it real quick, shall we? All right, so here we are on good old Griswold set, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to strip off Griswold set, um, and we are going to look solely at the block chance, um, and uh, we're going to add on Holy Shield, and we're going to test that too. So uh, first, we're going to look at the block chance without any other modifiers. So how much dexterity does it require us to get to the block chance cap with no other equipment um, and no skills either? So let's go ahead and start beefing this up. So we are looking at 157 dexterity with no holy shield. That is relatively low. Um, let's go ahead and reset this one more time, and we're also going to check it with holy shield. So uh, with holy shield is a different calculation. And uh, we're going to go ahead and max out our Holy Shield, because that is a very common thing that Paladins like to do. 
And, of course, this is only with level 20 Holy Shields. Uh, we probably need some more skill points in this to really get a good idea. Um, let's go ahead and put on the rest of the Griswolds set. Uh, just so we get some plus to skills rocking on the um, equipment. And we're going to need to put uh, a couple points in the dexterity here. So uh, let's go ahead and put in just enough so that we can equip the, uh, the weapon. And let's recast the uh, Holy Shield. Alright, so right now we have 53% block chance with only 90 dexterity. 56, 60, 63, 67, 70, 72, 74. So we are looking at hitting the uh, block chance cap at... Uh, <laughs> 122 dexterity uh, with this particular shield. Um, if we were to put on Griswold's Honor, for instance, I don't believe Griswold's Honor would be at the cap. So we are only at 56% with Griswold's Honor. Uh, so despite the fact that uh, Griswold's Honor is probably a better shield um, than L Winston's Guard, especially considering we're, rock we're you know, rocking the entire set, uh, Winston's Guard is actually capable of hitting that 75% block chance cap much sooner and much easier than the Vortex Shield, uh, which is only at 56% with the same dexterity value. So very interesting there. So let's move on to uh, number 7? Are we on number 7? What are we on now? Um, no, we're on number 6. Let's move on to number 6. Number 6 is an interesting one, and I'll meet you there. So number 6 is Arctic Set. So Arctic Set is a very interesting one that uh, definitely ha drops a lot, and that is the reason why it is made number 6 on my list. Um, number 1 is the Arctic Bindings Belt, which drops all the time from just about everywhere, and I feel like every single solo self-found build or uh, character that I've played has found an Arctic's Binding Belt at some point, but the lack of potion slots on it is just disheartening. But it has a massive 40% uh, cold resistance on it, as well as a pretty good defense for only level 2. And, uh, and I've always felt that this piece was a pretty decent piece to uh, be upgraded, and you can upgrade it at the very least one time for a very nice bonus uh, to the potion slots. And I wouldn't recommend necessarily upgrading it more than once, but upgrading it one time is certainly very useful um, if you can meet the, uh, the level requirement here. As you can see, it uh, goes up to level 25, but no, the strength requirement only goes up to 20. The armor is also relatively surprising in that it goes up really massively in the defense category. Um, for the first upgrade, with just a shale, a talent, a perfect diamond, it goes from 51 defense all the way up to 476. And for the second upgrade, it goes with a lemon of co up to a massive defense bump of 1,704. And, uh, and that's not all. So the very interesting thing about this set is that if we put it on a character, um, these set bonuses actually increase the defense even further. So here we are on another character who uh, will get the bonus. And as you can see here, with the defense bonus that it gets based on character level, now we're at 1,959 defense, which is just massive. Um, and the belt itself also gives us a nice 40% magic find. Um, so Arctic furs and arctic belt has made it into my tier list because i feel like the magic find combined with the uh the the kind of really nice quality of the belt and the one tier upgrade grade at the very least of the armor to massively increase the defense and the extreme <laughs> likelihood that you will find both of these um, it makes it for a very interesting combo um, in fact, if you upgrade Arctic Furs two times, um, you can even throw it on a Mercenary. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing the second tier upgrade, not unless you just want to, uh, because the Lem Rune that you're using to upgrade the Arctic Furs to tier two could be otherwise used for a, uh, a treachery. But the massive defense on this is pretty amazing. Um, unfortunately, the Mercenary does not get the extra bonus uh, from this, because that Mercenary obviously cannot wear the belt. But in general, I just feel like this upgrade from Tier 1 to Tier 2 is a pretty massive bump in both defense for both items, as well as the uh, very nice extra potion slots that it offers. Now, I probably would not recommend upgrading the Arctic Bindings Belt to Tier 3, which is the Vampire Fang Belt. It's really not worth it. 
Um, it only goes from 62 defense to 82, which is not really a big bump. But um, quite honestly, this little two-piece combo early on in, say, maybe a ladder run, if you because you're going to find an Arctic Binding Belt, you are. You're going to find an Arctic Furs, you are. I feel like every single time I've ever played, I've always found at least one of both of these. Uh, so upgrading them both one tier and getting good use out of them is certainly not a bad idea. Um, I could also see an argument for upgrading this to the third tier just as a makeshift armor for a mercenary. Uh, at level 61... Literally 1,704 defense is a lot of defense. And although defense is a very underrated stat, when your mercenary has a massive amount of defense for the level that he's in, it can make a huge difference in his ability to survive. Um, I'm not <laughs> arguing for upgrading it to the third tier. I just think that it's really cool that it is 1,959 defense. It's... Um, it's, it's just really cool to me. And I do think it can actually get a little bit higher than that, actually, um, if it rolls a very interesting way. But all in all, Arctic Furs and Arctic Belt are a very solid upgrade for Tier 1. So let's move on to the next item on the list, uh, which is the Immortal King set. So I've ranked the Immortal King set at number 5, and you might be saying to yourself, the Immortal King set? Well, why the whole set? Well, because if you're wearing the Immortal King set, you're usually wearing the whole set. That's really all there is to it. Uh, most people don't rock, you know, just a couple pieces of the set. Like, nobody uses just the weapon, um, unless you're turning it into an Iron Golem. Uh, nobody uses just the crown. Uh, it's not really that great, uh, unless you're just using it for magic fine, but it's not really that, that amazing. Um, there, there is a lot of going on with the Immortal King set, but for the most part, people like to wear the entire thing. Um, there are some arguments for some two-piece or some three-piece uh, set bonuses, but, uh, but for the most part, I don't think they're best in slot. However, if you are utilizing the entire set, there is no reason not to upgrade the entire set. Um, the Maul has a massive strength requirement of 225, which is just absolutely nuts. The armor is 232, um, and, uh, and upgrading the other pieces might seem like a bad idea in, uh, in retrospect, but when you think about it in the terms of, well, is it more strength requirement than the other pieces that I already need high strength requirement for? And the answer is not really. Um, the armor, which is 232, and the weapon, which is 225, dwarf any of the other pieces when upgraded to their maximum set. So upgrading the greaves to the Myrmidon greaves only goes to 208, which is much lower than the armor. Uh, the belt only goes to 185, which is, again, much lower than the armor. The gloves only goes to 185, which is, again, much lower than the armor. And the gloves apply 20 strength, which make it so that you can wear the armor and the weapons. Uh, the helmet can be upgraded twice from the original normal difficulty version. This was something that surprised even me. Um, it upgrades from the normal difficulty version to the Nightmare and the Nightmare difficulty version to the Elite, uh, which is freaking awesome. Um, and uh, you can get quite a bit of extra defense out of this helmet from going from the lower tier to the higher tier version. And again, it only goes to level 196 on the strength requirement. So it's not bad at all. The boots, again, are only 208. Now, granted, the defense bonus that you get from each one of these pieces by upgrading them is not massive in and of itself. But when added up, when you add up the defense bonus that you get from the greaves, the belt, the gloves, and the helmet um, as a whole picture, and then you also add in things like shout, um, and Iron Skin, which are also improving your defense, and perhaps even Shiver Armor, um, if you want to do Swap In for Fortitude, which is a very easy thing to do. You just keep Fortitude in your stash, or you keep it on your Mercenary. Um, and what you do is you just swap it onto yourself, you run in, get struck a couple times, wait till you see the little, little ice crystals around you, and then you take it off and put it back on your Mercenary. And uh, and in this way, you can very easily, easily utilize all this extra defense that you're getting. And you might be saying to yourself, well, why do I need all this extra defense? I mean, what's the point, right? Well, because you are choosing to utilize IK set, and this is the important part here, you might as well min-max the IK set as much as possible. So as you can see here, I have 14,646 defense with the full set. Um, this is a huge amount of defense, and most monsters cannot even uh, come close to hitting me, uh, which is pretty hilarious. Um, if I'm standing still, of course. 
Uh, this amount of defense is literally a 15% chance that they will hit me, uh, which is just, just absolutely amazing. And of course, when you Whirlwind, you keep your defense. So if you are a Whirlwinding Barbarian, that defense is actually going to come in handy uh, because it's going to prevent them from hitting you while you're Whirlwinding through them. All in all, I do feel like the IK set upgrades are a little high in the strength requirement. Um, but in retrospect to the other strength requirements that are needed to actually put on this set, um, it's not bad at all. And, uh, and if I was utilizing IK set on a Barbarian, if that was my goal, I just wanted to make an IK Barbarian and uh, I really didn't have any other um, you know, build in mind, then yes, upgrading the IK set is an absolutely great defense bump that you should probably do when you get yourself established. I don't recommend that you do it right away because you don't want to waste those lem runes on, uh, you know, just anything. Um, upgrade what you need to upgrade. Make yourself your treacheries first. Um, you know, do a little bit of trading. Get all your gear together. But then when you're well established and you've got your uh, barbarian in place and you're still planning on using uh, your immortal king set, then at that point, yes, you can probably start burning some of those lem and co runes to upgrade these pieces. Um, the helmet is only a shale and a tell rune which is absolutely nothing. So definitely a very good upgrade there, at least for one tier. So let's move on to the next item on our list, number four. Number four is Alder's set. Um, Alder's set has a couple pieces in it, and, uh, and these pieces can be upgraded. Um, most notably are the boots and the weapon. Uh, the boots are extremely popular boots that are utilized by a lot of characters. And, uh, and if you are one of those characters who loves to utilize the uh, Alder's boots, especially early game, um, they can be relatively sweet boots for a very long period of time until you find your best in slot piece. Um, if you are using this set, Alder set, then upgrading the boots actually makes sense because the armor and the helmet and the weapon and so forth and so on have similar strength requirements. If you look, Alder's advanced boots are 163 and the weapon when upgraded is 153. Um, and you do get a very nice bonus to strength from the weapon itself, uh, which is certainly nice. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense to upgrade the boots if you're not going to be utilizing these as a best-in-slot piece of equipment. Um, so I would probably not upgrade alders if you're just using these in passing. But if you do have a plan, if, you're, if your plan is to use alders as a regular you know, set, the entire set, and you want to use it as a regular... Um, piece of equipment, then yes, I would recommend upgrading them for the uh, the defense bump. Um, if you're a uh, s assassin and specifically you wanted the bump for the uh, kick damage, maybe you just wanted to burn a lemon a co and get some extra kick damage, uh, you know, until you can manage to find yourself a pair of shadow dancers, um, maybe. But I do feel like gore riders, upgraded gore riders is the better choice there. Um, but we come to the one that really puts this at number four, and that is Alder's Rhythm. So Alder's Rhythm, uh, Alder's set has always been held back by its weapon. Always. And, um, and the main issue has been that despite the fact that the, the set seems to be postured toward an endgame level equipment, um, it's not really ever been great endgame level equipment because the weapon has always held it back in that regard. Well... Now that we can upgrade the Alder's Rhythm weapon to the Devil Star, uh, we get a nice damage bump on Alder's ry Rhythm, which is not enough, but because of the three sockets, you can do things like put Ohm runes in it, uh, 1540 jewels, things like that, and Alder's Rhythm has actually gotten now to the point where you could actually utilize it um, in, a, uh, in a build. Um, now, would it be best in slot? I don't feel like it. Uh, I don't feel like it is. But it is now better than it ever was before. And um, if you are one of those characters who just loves to utilize these sets, who wants to build a character around Alder's Watchtower, then upgrading the Devil Star is going to be a very solid upgrade for you because it's going to allow you to get more out of this set than you could previously. Uh, let's move on to number three on the list, and I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Uh, it made it to number three, in my opinion, because it is just such a fun set. 
And I'm sure you can't tell by the uh, the look of this character because it's uh, it's 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 not a very uh, graphically amazing set. It is the uh, Cow King's Leathers. Now the Cow King's Leathers um, has two upgrades going on. So number one, you can upgrade the Cow King set to the highest tier version now. So you can upgrade the helmet from the War Hat to the Shako. You can upgrade the studded leather armor to the um, trellised armor, and then you can upgrade the trellised armor to the wire fleece, uh, and you can also upgrade the uh, leather boots or the heavy boots to the uh, the shark skin, and then the shark skin to the scarab shell, um, and you can get a nice defense bump on all the pieces. Um, they have also increased a lot of the effects on it uh, by adding things like plus to skills. Um, they added a defense based on character level, um, and quite honestly, they really made the set a lot more enticing uh, for use you know outside of normal difficulty um, if you are unaware the set has this really amazing 25 percent chance to cast level 5 static field and uh, and this is a absolutely amazing ability for melee characters but they sweetened the pot with the plus one to skills the 30 percent increased attack speed the defense the strength uh, the 100 percent magic find which is also beefed up by the 25 percent magic find on the uh, the boots and if you were to utilize this set as a full set and also socket the helmet and the armor with topazes, you could get a pretty massive amount of magic find out of this set uh, while also getting a very nice utility. The static field when struck is amazing. The uh, increased attack speed is also amazing. Um, and uh, it actually is not bad at all if you were to utilize this specifically for increased attack speed. Um, you could put 15% in the helmet and 15% um, in the armor, of course, and you could have 30% uh, plus 15-15, which is going to get you 60% increased attack speed and give you plus the skills and the static field proc and the magic find and the extra gold for monsters. And I think this might actually have a solid place in a gold find barbarian's repertoire. Um, the magic find on here combined with the static field, the increased attack speed, and the other things make for a very tempting choice. They are also very easy to upgrade from tier 1 to tier 2. Granted, the helmet is already tier 2. Uh, it's a, it is a war hat. But you can very easily upgrade this from tier 1 to tier 2 and get a nice defense bo boost. Um, it is still very, very viable um, as a level 30 piece of equipment um, in this set for a lot of melee characters. Um, I would honestly recommend this set to um, low-level zealers. I would recommend it to, uh, to low-level barbarians. I would recommend it to low-level um, spear assassins. Quite, I mean, uh, assa yeah, well, sorry, uh, Amazons and even low-level assassins. Um, the set is just absolutely amazing in that it provides you with a very nice effect of Static Field. Static Field is even stronger in normal difficulty. Um, it does lose a little bit of its power in Nightmare, and it does go down to 50% effectiveness um, in Hell difficulty. But quite honestly, having a constant Static Field spam... Um, on a high-level character is certainly not a downside in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I'm actually considering trying to work this in to a couple builds just for the fun of it uh, because I would love to see that static field going off all the time on my characters. Um, I'm not exactly sure which characters I would like to put this on, but the magic find is really the enticing component here, and it's why it made it to number three, in my opinion. Not just that it is a useful set that could potentially be worked into some builds, but that it allows a melee character who is not normally a magic find character to do magic find. Um, this could potentially be a game changer, in my opinion, for magic finding melee characters um, because it offers a option for you to have, at the very bare minimum, 125% magic find on a character that would probably otherwise not have any. Um, you do get some other nice effects as well, and I feel like I've talked enough on this. So we are going to move on to number two. Uh, number two is one of my favorites. And number two is Erotha's Finery. So Erotha's Finery is one of those interesting sets that can be utilized far past normal difficulty. Um, despite the fact that it is only a level 15 set, um, you can utilize it in normal, you can utilize it in nightmare, and believe it or not, you can even utilize Zarathas in hell difficulty uh, for budget 
increase to maximum resistances. I've actually killed the Ubers with it before. It is uh, it is an amazing set. Um, it recently got an upgrade, which included a 24% bonus to piercing attack, which makes it a solid choice for many characters. And one of the main downsides of Arathas has always been that the belt didn't have enough belt slots. Um, and being able to upgrade the belt from the normal difficulty to the Nightmare version is now a absolutely solid upgrade for Arathas and puts it much higher than it ever was before. Um, I would not, however, upgrade the uh, Rathas cord to the Troll Belt, uh, which is going to give you a very tiny defense bonus, and it's going to increase the strength requirement to 151, which is just massive. Um, the gloves also have a very nice little upgrade from the Tier 1 to the Tier 2. But again, I would not upgrade the gloves from Tier 2 to Tier 3. The defense uh, was not really that great on the increase, and the uh, strength requirement went way too high at 151. The helmet also suffers from the same issue. The helmet gets a very nice defense bump from the crown to the grand crown, but when you upgrade from the Grand Crown to the Corona, the strength requirement goes up way too high. Now, why am I rating this so high on the list on number two? Well, the reason why I'm rating this so high is because despite Aratha's small potion slots and low defense, this set has been utilized on many different characters over the years, um, from Classic all the way to uh, you know Lord of Destruction and Diablo II Resurrected, as well as hardcore characters utilize this set for its massive defensive and elemental defensive capability. And being able to upgrade this set at the very least one tier to get more potion slots and more defense extends its usability into Nightmare and Hell difficulty even more. Um, before, you had to sacrifice the defense to get the resistances. And now, you can get the defense and the resistances. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, honestly, I feel like Aratha's one-tier upgrade from the uh, normal difficulty to the exceptional difficulty, or the exceptional version, is a very solid upgrade. I would not, however, upgrade it from the exceptional to the elite. I feel like that is not going to be worth it. Um, unless you are a character who just has that much strength, and you'd like to utilize this set and, and held difficulty, but I just don't really see it being viable. And I have always used Irathas as a stopgap measure, in my opinion, um, to uh, replace resistances for a long period of time until I can fix my equipment. Um, and that's really what Arathas is, is that it is an absolutely excellent set for normal difficulty, nightmare difficulty, and even when you get into hell difficulty, it can still help you fix all your resistances and, uh, and move into hell difficulty to find better equipment. But usually, once you start to find better equipment, once you start to fix your resistances, once you find things like a Guardian Angel Templar Coat uh, or other items which will increase your maximum resistance, um, the Arathus starts to wane off. Not that you couldn't still use it, but I just don't really see any reason to go to the Tier 3. Um, and let's move on finally to our number one item on the list. So our number one item on the list, no, it's not Tancred's. Um, it is actually the Death's Gloves and Death's Sash. So, believe it or not, Death's Gloves and Death's Sash is an absolutely excellent combo for a lot of characters, even endgame and even for best in slot. The main issue with the Death's Guard Spider or the Death's Guard Sash has always been that it has the worst potion slots imaginable. Um, and, uh, and it makes for a very tough choice. Do I want a very, very nice, cannot be frozen, all resistances, bonus to minimum damage, 40% bonus to attack rating, 8% uh, lifesteal, all resistances 25, and 30% increased attack speed, or do I want max potion slots? <laughs> and, um, and the very interesting thing is, is that if you were to utilize this set on a high-level character, the, the bonuses that you get are pretty amazing. You get the Cannot Be Frozen, you get the All Resistances 15 from the two-piece, you get the 8% lifesteal and the 30% increased attack speed, along with a massive 50% poison resistance and poison length reduced 75%. The combo of these two pieces is just a massively awesome effect. But it's always been held back by two things. Number one is the defense of the items has always been extremely low. Um, you're talking about, like, it's like, 
20 defense for the sash and like it gets like two defense for the leather gloves um, absolutely awful and um being able to upgrade the death's guard sash into the uh, nightmare version or the exceptional version will grant you full potion slots and it is such a cheap and easy upgrade at a shale and a towel and a perfect diamond that quite honestly it is now probably one of the best items that you can upgrade on all the set items in my opinion um, we also have death's hand gloves which while it doesn't give you a massive defense boost if you are utilizing the death's sash and the death's gloves together in a set to get those two bonuses which is most likely what you would do if you were using death sash at a very high level you are probably going to be using the death's hand bramble bits um, and you might as well upgrade them and get the extra defense out of it and so in my opinion this bonus out of all the bonuses in the game is probably the best upgrade that has been capable so far um, death's guard and death's hand make for absolutely excellent one tier upgrades and if you are utilizing these on a character toward the end of the game as your best in slot so that you don't have to use raven frost um, so that you don't have to use you know a lifesteal ring because you got to look you're getting you're getting cannot be frozen you're getting eight percent lifesteal you're also getting uh, all resistances 15 and you're getting poison resist 50 percent so you're getting 75 percent poison resist um, and 30 percent increased attack speed and i cannot stress 30 percent increased attack speed enough because there are very few items in the game that will actually give you 30 percent attack speed i can actually name them all and if i miss one feel free to say it in the comments but uh, basically there is only saigon's gloves which is not a good combo for end game. Um, Immortal Kings has 25%, not 30, and Death's Hand has 30%. So you literally have very few choices for 30% increased attack speed. It's literally, I think, only two, uh, unless I missed one. And um, this is the very beautiful thing about this piece, and I can't gush over it enough. And I actually have a plan to incorporate this two piece into one of the characters that I'm building. Uh, because number one, I don't want to use a Raven Frost on that character. Um, and number two, I really would like to have the 30% increased attack speed versus 20%. Um, and, uh, and I'm actually really looking forward to the lifesteal bonus as well, because that's also going to free up a little bit of uh, other equipment so I don't have to worry about lifesteal as much. I mean, what you get from the two-piece bonus on, uh, on the, the Death's Disguise set is just amazing. Now, unfortunately, the sword did not have the same luck with the upgrades. The sword, unfortunately, did not get a good uh, upgrade from Tier 1 to Tier 2. has way too high strength and dex requirements, and the upgrade from Tier 2 to th Tier 3 is just as awful. Um, I would not recommend upgrading Death's Touch. Well, ladies and germs, ladies and gentlemen, uh, chinchillas and chillaettes, there it is. There is my top 10 set upgrades for Diablo 2 Resurrected. I know it's been about 52 minutes, but we did have 32 sets to choose from for these items. And um, it was difficult. It was really difficult to choose these items. If there's any item that you feel should have been on the list that I left out, feel free to put it down in the comments. And uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you made it this far, because you obviously liked the video if you made it 53 minutes and 17 seconds in. And um, keep watching.